Does an ancient and neglected commandment from God hold a message for us today? A message of warning us of imminent catastrophe. My guest today, New York Times best-selling author Jonathan Kahn, makes a compelling and sobering case for this. You'll hear that case today on Jewish Voice. And welcome to Jewish Voice, a program to help you to understand the Jewish roots of your Christian faith, Bible prophecy, and world events surrounding Israel. A 3,000-year-old mystery that may hold the secret for what lies ahead. A mystery that quite possibly contains an ominous warning, one that tells us of an even greater collapse in America. Now, I'm not just talking about the crash of stock markets or the housing market or the job market, but something even more destructive, something of cataclysmic proportions that could change lives in America, life as we know it, in fact, forever. Now, that may sound dramatic, but you need to listen carefully. Here to bring more insight into this ancient mystery, and he's a New York Times best-selling author, and today he's going to reveal something he's never spoken about on this program before, the supernatural secrets behind something known in Hebrew as the Shemitah and what may soon happen since this coming year is, in fact, a Shemitah year. Please welcome back to Jewish Voice my longtime friend, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. Hey, buddy. You know, I'm reflecting, we're, I'm talking about a New York Times best-selling author, and I just keep wanting to add in there, my friend. You know, we've <laughs> known each other for almost 30 years. Yeah, yes, uh, 1988, yeah, yeah, when I was just becoming a Messianic rabbi, I called up, you're the first person I spoke to who kind and of welcomed I, me in. And our lives have really had this unique <laughs> yes. parallel. We're both yes. Jonathans, both have Brazilian wives. We end up working in the same countries. It's really We remarkable. were born at the same time. We were born again what at are the we, same well, time. You're older than I am by about one month, I think. Um, I'm December 1. I don't know about that. But you're December? I'm December 19, 1. And, and you're and August. I'm September 25th. September 25th. So, so that's so, pretty close. Yeah, very close. Same, same year. But anyway. But you're younger. I want to congratulate you, my friend. Thank you, John. Again, New York Times bestseller for how, how long now? The, uh, Give us an update. With, with the, well, on the newest the book. Harvard, the, new, the newest book just came out September 2nd, and that week it went on the New York Times. So it's been there ever since, every week. Um, it's uh, been, the, they've told me it's the, the top selling uh, faith book in the world right now. Wow. Now, the yeah. Harbinger has sold how many books today? Uh, approaching about two million. Two million books. Around. Well, it's, I'm proud to say I know you. Thank you. Likewise, I'm Jonathan. I'm really, really uh, thrilled I didn't, for I didn't what expect God's done. Th this book was a surprise. I mean, it sounds strange, but I wasn't planning to do this. But uh, the publisher said, you know, the Shemitah is coming and they want to hear something. I said, well, I'll help you with something. And then all these things that I did not expect, revelations came like in one month. So I wrote it in, in uh, May, uh, May and June while I was on the road, very, in about six weeks. And then they kind of rushed it out and it was the Lord. Nobody planned this book. Well, the Lord did, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But the Harbinger was something that had been in your heart for a long time. And yes. you actually wrote it as a fiction. Yeah, originally I wrote it straight out, you know, uh, nonfiction. But then as soon as I finished, I was led by the Lord to change it. Like the Lord uses allegory and stories to, to reach people because the harbinger has a lot of heavy things in it. In that one moment, I saw the whole story, a prophet and seals. And well, in one moment, I started writing like that. And as I did, the thing just flowed out, wrote itself, was the easiest thing I ever did. And within four months, it was done. Jonathan, the story is compelling. The fiction is compelling. But what really is and why I think it sold almost two million and why it's had such great impact is the revelation behind it and the connections that you bring out in the book between 9-11 and God's warnings to ancient mm -hmm. Israel. Mm -hmm. And the parallels are, you can say coincidence on one thing, two things, three things, but when you start adding it up yeah. and you yes. see the detail Yes. That history repeats itself and yeah. the warnings that are in such detail 
connected back to the warnings of ancient, to ancient Israel. Yeah. There's yeah. no way to come away with yeah. that. Yeah, and I don't take any credit for it. You know, I, I was I was standing at the corner of Ground Zero when when something said you have there's an object there it was the tree it said you you have to search this there's a mystery here and as I did it became the first puzzle piece of this mystery that kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and every time I needed like the next key someone would say something that'd be the word or something would appear on my computer that I did not go for and since the the book came out it has been coming true since well let, let's dig into this idea of the Shemitah because mm -hmm. You talk about it in the Harbinger, it begins but now you it begins there. But now you've held up a magnifying glass to this. You've been receiving revelation. You're now zooming in mm -hmm. on the Shemitah. What yes. is the Shemitah? The Shemitah is, is as God had every seventh day was the Sabbath day. Every seventh year was the Sabbath year, and there was no no sowing, no reaping, no plowing. The land rested entirely for an entire year. And there was no buying or selling of the fruits of the land. And on the last day of the Shemitah, it was called Elul 29. That's that, that final day, the month of Elul, uh, 29th day. On that day, all credits wiped out, all debts wiped out. All the financial accounts of the nation are wiped clean. Now, this was to be a blessing for Israel. I was going to say, it sounds like a wonderful thing. How many would like <laughs> to have their debt canceled out? Yeah. It may and, happen. And, and, and here's the, the, the Lord does that for yes. us with our sin. Yes. He removes our sin and he remembers them no more. There's a wiping clean yes. of the account. Yes. That's yes. the good thing. That but, is the good but thing. But there's something not so there's good There's another here. side to the Shemitah because what happened is as Israel turned away from God and they began to worship other gods and pursue gain and push God out and break the Sabbath, break the Shemitah, the Shemitah comes back as a sign of judgment on a nation that has driven God out of its life and that has, that has pursued gain. And what happens is 586 BC, in the, in the days of the prophet Jeremiah, the Shemitah comes upon Israel in this form of judgment. The nation is, is destroyed. Uh, the people are taken captive to Babylon for 70 years. And God gives the reason. The reason it was 70 years is because of the Shemitah. God said the land now will rest for all the Shemitahs that it did not observe. Now the land will observe its Sabbaths. So the Shemitah becomes this sign. It gives the exact timing of judgment. And actually, it doesn't just wipe out the debts. Now it's wiping out a nation. It's coming back at them. Now, now the point of the Shemitah is to turn the nation back to God. The, the point is to put God first and, and put everything second. It's, it's declaring His sovereignty. But if they don't do it by, by choice, it comes back at them by force. And now, and you have a revelation about the Shemitah directly connected to America. We have yes. to take a break, yes. though. Though when we come back, we're going to talk about it. And later in the program, we have an important update to share a report from the remote bush of Zimbabwe. Listen to this now. A group that claims to be descendants of the ancient tribe of Levi, the priests of the Old Testament. This is something you don't want to miss. But first, what may happen if America does refuse what may be warnings from God. Stay with me. Your gracious gift in support of the work of Jewish Voice right now will make you a vital part of providing life-saving medical help to some of the most impoverished and needy Jewish people in the world. But our medical teams provide more than just physical care and comfort. This care opens the door for us to share God's love and the good news that Jesus is their true Messiah. Today, we are urgently preparing for our next medical clinic to bless a remote tribe in Ethiopia who are likely descendants of one of the lost tribes of Israel. We go with a powerful sense of urgency because we know that time is literally running out for many of the most vulnerable there, especially infants and toddlers, and that without our help, some of these precious sons and daughters of Abraham will die needlessly for lack of basic medical care. But you can help save them. But we must act now. Call or click to share life-saving help right now, and we'll send you a very special pair of resources as an expression of our thanks. For any gift of support, we will send you the riveting new book by New York Times best-selling author, Jonathan Kahn, The Mystery of the Shemitah the 3,000-year-old mystery that holds the secrets of America's future. 
This book, which expands on Messianic Rabbi Jonathan Kahn's first book, The Harbinger, reveals how this ancient biblical mystery is still at work, how it's impacting our lives every day, and what lies ahead for you, the economy, and the future of the world. Plus, you'll receive this illuminating two-CD set by Rabbi Jonathan Burnus called God's Plan for Israel. This in-depth teaching series will help you understand the role Israel and the Jewish people play in the last days, the return of Jesus, and God's plan for you. Both inspiring and eye-opening resources are yours when you share any gift in support of the life-changing outreaches of Jewish Voice. But if you are able to share a special offering of 100 British pounds or more today, we have an additional group of specially chosen gifts for you. When you call or click right now, we'll send you the gifts just mentioned, along with a beautifully custom woven blanket with a wonderful reminder to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And along with it, we'll also send you this insightful DVD presentation by Rabbi Jonathan Burnus and a panel of world-renowned prophecy experts called Unlocking the Prophetic Mysteries of Israel. Plus, as an ongoing expression of our thanks for choosing to help so many in need, you'll also receive our informative and inspiring magazine, Jewish Voice Today. Please remember, God has promised to bless those who bless the Jewish people. To share an urgently needed gift in support of this vital outreach and request your thank you resources, please call, click, or write now. And remember, your generous gift will make you a part of extending life-saving medical help to some very needy Jewish people. Please remember, the days are short and the needs of these people are critical. Please act now. Does an ancient and neglected commandment from God hold a message for us today? A message of warning us of imminent catastrophe. My guest today, New York Times best-selling author Jonathan Kahn, makes a compelling and sobering case for this. You'll hear that case today on Jewish Voice. I'm back with Messianic Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. And Jonathan, you just wrote a new book, just came out a few weeks ago, The Mystery of the Shemitah, the 3,000-year-old mystery that holds the secret of America's future. Now, a quick report again on the book. It's been on the New York Times, Times best-selling best list every, every since week. the day it came out. Yes. Yes. People want to know what's ahead. Yeah, it's actually come out stronger than The Harbinger. It's actually going stronger than, than even that did. Well, The yeah. Harbinger was a wake-up call to yeah. America, and now the, yeah. sh the mystery of the Shemitah is a wake-up call to America. Now, you were explaining the Shemitah yeah. as a blessing to begin with. Yeah, it becomes a sign of God's, of God's judgment and on a nation. And it's also his pattern, just like the, the, we have the seven day pattern. And so this is the seven year pattern of God that's there. And one of the things that if you, if you put it into modern terms, the resting of the land, the, the, the ceasing of production, ceasing of labor, economically that would be a depression or a recession. If we put it into modern terms, if you take the final day when all debt is wiped out and, the, and, and all financial accounts are, are wiped clean, in modern times that would be a financial collapse. That's what happens. You have the financial uh, wiping out, wiping clean. So just taking that first part, that economically, could this thing have been affecting us? It's erratic behavior that we've kind of grown desensitized because, to, because, right? Yeah, because it's so, you think it's so random, but there's something behind it that's not random. And that is that you've had, a, you've had a long rise, you have these long rises, and then you have these crashes. And if you look back at the last 40 years, you have, you have these five crashes. And here they are, 1973, 1980, 1987, 2000, and 2007. Now notice something about those. The Shemitah is a seven-year cycle. Every single one of them, 1973, 1980, seven-year cycle. 80, 87, seven-year cycle. 2000, 2007, seven-year cycle. Every single one of the, the crashes of the last 40 years have happened in a seven-year cycle. Not only that, did any of them happen on the actual biblical appointed year of the Shemitah? The answer is every single one of them did. Really? Every single one of them did. And for instance, I'll give you an example. The, the top three greatest crashes are the Depression, the Great Recession, number two, and 1930, 1937, 1938. Well, 1937, 1938 is the year of the Shemitah. Here's another thing. You, we, you know this, but not everybody knows it. Tishri, the month of Tishri. This is the high holy month on our calendar. 
But it's also the key to the Shemitah because the Shemitah the begins. Seven month, by the, the seven, way. That's it. That's the right. rabbis declare the first day of Rosh Hashanah, the beginning of the year. That's right. But it's actually the seventh month which is, in the Hebrew which calendar. Which is like the Sabbath month. Now you have the Sabbath year. And also the Shemitah, be, but see, the Shemitah begins with, the, with Tishri 1. When, when you have that, it begins with Tishri 1. And then when it reaches its peak, Elul 29, sunset, everything's wiped out. The next day is Tishri. So Tishri is the month that begins it, ends it and manifests that crash. So for years, uh, analysts were mystified by what's this thing, why did- You mean they're not looking at the Hebrew calendar? No, huh? they're not. And, I think, <laughs> and, and, and you know, people even noticed that why do these great crashes take place around, tend to, around October, September? I mean, we were even aware of that. They could not figure it out. They said it was because the farmers, they, nothing made sense but it's there in the Bible. The Bible, God gives this time period for the time of the wipeout. Of, this is the financial nullification. It's been affecting our lives ever since. I'll give you another one. If you look at the greatest point crashes, now these are the greatest magnitude crashes in history. Do any of them, the top five, do any of them take place or, or close to that Elul 29 wipeout? Now, wipeout day, that Elul, but not just once a year, the one that comes around only once every seven years. Do any of them? The answer is of the top five, every single one of them does. Really? They, with a 99 and a point and percentage proximity to that wipeout day. Okay, well, let's, let's look at some simple math. 2001, 2008, hmm. 2015. Hmm. Yeah, we're gonna get it to that. Um, yeah, that, that's, well, that, <laughs> you went right, right for it, Jonathan. Um, I know we're going we're gonna to get into well, and and the book is the first time that I actually listen. I'm not a, I'm not someone who sets dates, you know, uh, but there are dates in here, and I'm not saying God has to do. I'm going to give some cautions, but I think we should we should be prepared and we should be aware of it. The stock market has been rising and rising since the last shemitah. It kind of goes this, this. That's how it goes, and so it has been rising. But when you hit in September 22nd, the week of September 22nd to September 26th this year suddenly the stock market started reeling. It became volatile, it became violent. When did that happen? That week was the week that the Shemitah began. And the day that was the peak, the peak crash over um, almost 300 points of that week was the day of the Shemitah when it began. This is the important thing I want people to understand. We don't set dates, mm -hmm. but the Bible talks about the men of Issachar being wise because they understood the times, yes. and I think you're advocating yes. Yes. not date setting, but be understand aware. the times. Yes. yes, absolutely. We need to be aware. I mean, even if you knew nothing about the Shemitah, you would, if you have, if you, you're in, in tune, you know that this, this nation and this civilization is heading rapidly away from God. God is not mocked. I believe, I mean, I'll talk about what, but I believe a great shaking is coming, regardless of whether it happens in this time period or not. A great shaking is coming that will affect the economy, will affect the, the financial realm, and more than that, that will be a massive thing. And all these things are linked to this mystery. Well, we'll have you back to talk about okay. the specifics. I feel like we just got started. There's so much more to talk about. We just scratched the yes. surface today. Obviously, I don't need to tell you, must have. Of course, you need to be prepared and the book has vital, vital information. You really want to get a copy of Jonathan's latest book, The Mystery of the Shemitah, and in a moment we'll tell you how to get it. It's an eye-opening book that will help you to understand the times we live in and how they may affect you in ways that you might not even know about. Uh, we need to know the times. Up next, by the way, a group who may be related to the priests of the Old Testament, the Levites. They have survived and they're waiting for you. Your gracious gift in support of the work of Jewish Voice right now will make you a vital part of providing life-saving medical help to some of the most impoverished and needy Jewish people in the world. But our medical teams provide more than just physical care and comfort. This care opens the door for us to share God's love and the good news that Jesus is their true Messiah. Today, we are urgently preparing for our next medical clinic to bless a remote tribe in Ethiopia who are likely descendants of one of the lost tribes of Israel. We go with a powerful sense of urgency because we know that time is literally running out for many of the most vulnerable there, especially infants and toddlers, and that without our help, 
Some of these precious sons and daughters of Abraham will die needlessly for lack of basic medical care. But you can help save them. But we must act now. Call or click to share life-saving help right now. And we'll send you a very special pair of resources as an expression of our thanks. For any gift of support, we will send you the riveting new book by New York Times bestselling author, Jonathan Kahn, The Mystery of the Shemitah. The 3,000 year old mystery that holds the secrets of America's future. This book, which expands on Messianic Rabbi Jonathan Kahn's first book, The Harbinger, reveals how this ancient biblical mystery is still at work, how it's impacting our lives every day, and what lies ahead for you, the economy, and the future of the world. Plus, you'll receive this illuminating two CD set by Rabbi Jonathan Burness called God's Plan for Israel. This in-depth teaching series will help you understand the role Israel and the Jewish people play in the last days. The return of Jesus and God's plan for you. Both inspiring and eye-opening resources are yours when you share any gift in support of the life-changing outreaches of Jewish Voice. But if you are able to share a special offering of $100 or more today, we have an additional group of specially chosen gifts for you. When you call or click right now, we'll send you the gifts just mentioned, along with a beautifully custom woven blanket with a wonderful reminder to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And along with it, we'll also send you this insightful DVD presentation by Rabbi Jonathan Burness and a panel of world-renowned prophecy experts called Unlocking the Prophetic Mysteries of Israel. Plus, as an ongoing expression of our thanks for choosing to help so many in need, You'll also receive our informative and inspiring magazine, Jewish Voice Today. Please remember, God has promised to bless those who bless the Jewish people. To share an urgently needed gift in support of this vital outreach and request your thank you resources, please call, click, or write now. And remember, your generous gift will make you a part of extending life-saving medical help to some very needy Jewish people. Please remember, the days are short and the needs of these people are critical. Please act now. I want to show you a tribe in Zimbabwe that has retained Old Testament traditions and rituals for over 2,500 years. They're called the Lemba. We recently held a wonderful outreach to provide medical care, dental care, eye care, even eye surgeries in the middle of the bush in Zimbabwe and it's people like you that made a difference in their lives. Take a look. In one of the most remote areas of southern Zimbabwe, a team of 51 volunteers were joined by 120 national workers. And together, they just finished one of the most challenging and rewarding Jewish voice outreaches to date. In a week full of both work and ministry, the Lord's hand was clearly seen as Jewish voice conducted its very first medical outreach to the impoverished Lemba Jewish community. We've seen children who, who couldn't speak, they couldn't hear, they, they were, they, they couldn't do anything. I, I'm shocked. And then, and then they can speak and, and they can hear and they can say their names. Babies that, that there was this 18 month old baby that, that couldn't even stand up or sit up, nothing. And, and then it had uh, witchcraft bracelets on its wrist. They were cut off and the baby sat up immediately. I mean, <laughs> eyes, eyes to see with adults. I've seen so many miracles. I, my heart is, is just filling up. I, I'm, I'm forever going to be changed over this entire experience. It's the best thing that has ever happened to me. Lord is looking down on this with favor and he's looking down on this that he loves culture and he loves diversity. And uh, I had such a warm, wonderful feeling that uh, the Lemba here are very gentle and loving people and that the Lord has not forgotten them and that they have retained as much as they possibly can of their culture and of their, um, of their Jewishness. It is such an amazing experience. You watch the video, but it doesn't capture the amazing experience of touching these people, of God using you. And I'll tell you this, it's just a week. 
And if you'll commit yourself, God will use you and he'll change you as you serve people in great need. We'd love to have you join us uh, on one of our future medical outreaches. To volunteer or get more information, you can email us at outreach at jvmi.org. Once again, that's jvmi.org. And if you're not able to join us on one of these outreaches but still have a desire to help these wonderful people, stick around because I'll tell you how right after this news. Stay with me. The Spirit moving mightily. Miracles. Fulfilled prophecy. Marveling as Jesus calls his people back to himself in preparation for his return. Serving as his hands and feet in far-flung places around the globe. I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. The king will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. This is what outreach is about with Jewish Voice. You can be a part of it. Now is the time. Answer the call. To find out how, call 1-800-299-9374 or go to www.pleaseanswerthecall.org. Since 1967, Jewish Voice has been dedicated to proclaiming the good news that Yeshua, Jesus, is Messiah and Savior to the Jew first and also to the nations. Now, one way that we do this is by helping some of the most impoverished and needy Jewish people in the world. We've actually been able to demonstrate God's love by providing these people with medical care, dental care, eye care, even eye surgery, all completely free of charge. But most importantly, we share the gospel. And it's because of your faithful support that we're able to make a difference in their lives. Now, we need your help. I want to ask you to be a part of saving lives, of transforming lives, and blessing desperate Jewish people by sharing a generous gift today. If you're willing to do that, if you will say yes, we have some very special ways of saying thank you today. I've selected some helpful and encouraging resources that I think will bless you and I wanna send you. You can just call, you can click, or you can write now to share and request them and remember, it's your generous gift. Whatever you can do will be used to help some of the most impoverished and needy Jewish people in the world. Hey, by the way, we're on Facebook. You can check us out by going to facebook.com slash Jewish Voice and just check like and you'll be part of our Jewish Voice community and we'll keep you up to date on what's happening around the ministry here. And we're glad to have you as a friend. Well, as I leave you today, I want to remind you, as I do on every program, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Now more than ever, the people and land of Israel need our prayers. And there's a great uh, promise. God says, those that pray for Israel will prosper. So uh, I encourage you to pray for Israel this week. We're out of time. Until next time, this is Jonathan Bernis saying shalom and God bless you. Jewish Voice is made possible by the support of friends and partners like you. 